So just to start off, I just want to provide a little context about the data I'm talking about. Um, and for any of you who have been to uh, any type of data presentation for the Foundation Center, you're familiar with this. But just so you have perspective, each year the Foundation Center captures the grant making of over 1,000 of the largest U.S. foundations. And this is out of more than 82,000 grant makers. So it's a very tiny share. But because we're talking about the largest funders, we're actually capturing about half of all grant dollars awarded each year. And what we're coding them for are the issue focus of the grants, the population focus, the recipient organization type, the type of support or strategy uh, provided by the grant, and the geographic focus. And this is very hands-on labor-intensive work, but it's through this that we're able to look in detail at these types of trends and within very specific geographic areas. Well, what about funding, giving for public K-12 education, uh, and how this fits as a share of overall foundation giving? So I'm hoping that many of you are familiar with this, but if not, uh, there's a portal that the Foundation Center created back in 2009 called Foundations for Education Excellence. Uh, the web address is educationexcellence.org. This, in fact, was a project funded by the Mott Foundation with a consortium of foundation funders coming about at the time when the Obama administration was beginning its education reform efforts, and there was really an unprecedented interest in finding places where the priority of, priorities of foundations were co coinciding with the priorities of the Department of Education in their reform efforts. So it actually has a great deal of resources drilling down to very specific issue areas, so uh, something I, I want to take a look at. Through that work, we also honed in very closely in terms of how we could bring our data to bear on questions about what was happening with public education in the U.S. So this first pie I'm showing you is just the representation of the share of overall the domestic foundation giving. So we've taken out the international grant dollars, just looking at domestic funding for the U.S. What share is targeting K-12 public education? And it's actually about 12%. Uh, you know, it's a pretty substantial share. When we bring in California, it's about 14%. Nationally, that represented about $2.1 billion. For California, we're looking at over $390 million. And this is by no means all the funding. As I said, this is the 1,000 largest foundations, although it's certainly capturing the major players nationally in terms of the education reform space. And in fact, as you'll see, and you, you have this in your handout as well, who the, who the major funders were, particularly of that $390 million coming into California. Uh, and interestingly, Gates and Walton, two non-California foundations ranked at the top of the list. Now that said, more than half of the grant dollars we were able to track in our sample, focusing on K-12 public education in the state, we're coming as well from foundations based in the state. So there, clearly there's a lot of activity, and as will be evidenced by our panelists this morning. You'll notice as well uh, that typically, you know, when you see these kinds of lists, it's top five, top 10, top 25. Well, here we have the top six, because I thought, you know what, Broad Foundation, particularly given their national profile around working in this issue area, the first question I would imagine getting is, where does Broad rank? So I just threw them on as number six. Cool, and that's where they rank. So, in terms, of, in terms of this funding, who, who is getting, who's receiving this support? And this, I thought, was kind of interesting. So, here we've got the $392 million. That came into California for K-12 public education. The top five recipients captured 22% of this funding. Funding is very concentrated among the largest recipients, and I'll make another point about that in a moment. Uh, these were the top five recipients. Uh, certainly a lot of this money is related to charter schools, but also other types of education reform. Uh, it was interesting for the Making Waves education program. Well, when we look at, in that top list of funders, the Phoebe Snow Foundation came up. And I actually had to look up Phoebe Snow because I had never heard of it. Um, and I thought, wasn't Phoebe Snow a character on All My Children or something? And then I saw I was a singer, and you know, I realized my cultural knowledge is so limited. Um, <laughs> But that said, I mean, well, it's sort of interesting because the, the donor who created this, uh, this is John Scully, an investor. You know, I thought, well, there must be some connection there that people in the Bay Area are aware of that I just missed. So that said, certainly the, this large concentration of resources, and then if we just, if we go through to the top 10, 
34% of the dollars. The top 50, 63%, almost two thirds of the funding going just to the top 50 recipients. Meanwhile, there were over 1,000 organizations that we were able to track just from our grant sample that received funding related to K-12 education. And I would say by comparison, if we look at the share of funding for, the, for arts organizations, you know, typically what do the top 25 account for? It's usually around 35, 40%. Uh, so there's, there's a real concentration, which doesn't mean that there's not very interesting work and important work happening across the board, but you know, just in terms of where the dollars are going, the, the big institutions seem to be attracting it. All right, so then we get to, well, what was the funding for? And not surprisingly, given what we've seen, the single largest share of funding was targeting charter schools, uh, just over a quarter of grant dollars. And this includes you know, both grants going directly to charter schools to execute programs, as well as to organizations that are supporting the charter school movement. And we're in fact, during the panel discussion, we have a question that will you know, sort of ask what our, our, our funders are thinking about the charter school movement uh, in general. The next largest share was the, the other and unspecified funding. And for those of you who are grant seekers, you're probably not unaware of the fact that the vast majority of funding by foundations, well, foundations are required to report the recipient name, the recipient location, and the recipient amount on their 990 PF. Most of them only report the recipient name and the amount. We spend a lot of time researching locations. So there's really limited information. Uh, it, you know, it was a grant to XYZ school district. So for that reason, we're seeing a lot of that funding. We're also seeing grant making for purposes such as general support for an institution where it says general support to purchase equipment for a school district or a particular school, that type of funding. So there's some that's a little more specific but really sort of falls in that general category. Then we have teacher quality and school leadership. And within this is included funding for teacher assessment. So that's our, our third largest share, and clearly a big area of focus uh, in terms of what grant makers talk about, what, and certainly what we've been hearing broadly in the public discussions about uh, how to improve K-12 education. The next several areas, we have education reform unspecified. So basically, we've, in our grants classification system, we've researched the missions of all of the recipient organizations receiving grants. So we know that some are working specifically in the education reform space. So these would be generally general support grants, unspecified grants, going to organizations that we know are focused on education reform. Now, in terms of education research and data, this is both the fo a focus on improving the capture of data on education outcomes, as well as conducting assessments of the existing data. Uh, and this was certainly a major priority, as we all know, with the, uh, the Department of Education reform efforts over the last few years. And then with STEM, the Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, in that case, this is, these are grants that are primarily focused on improving STEM education, although certainly that's being encompassed in other types of grant making. And I'll just I'll pull up the last areas uh, that, that were included in the analysis. Physical education and nutrition was 4% uh, literacy reading, we have out-of-school summer learning, about 2%. Community schools, of course, the basically social service-based uh, efforts included within the school system are about 2%. Special ed and arts education, there's a little bit of money in there for gifted, but it actually totaled less than 1% of the overall funding. What I will note, because you may have a question when you look at this and say, well, can't some of these priorities in fact overlap? And that is true. So if you weren't trying to add up to 100%, you could actually say larger shares of funding were targeting several of these different categories. But what we did for the purpose of the analysis is basically prioritize issue areas so that we could tally it up to 100%. You could see what the primary focus was. 